Hello, everybody. Welcome to Cohort. I am Megan Torrance, and this, this is a big day. This is a special day. It's not just because I get to drink my uh, high test pre XAPI cohort XAPI mocha, um, because I drink one of those every afternoon. Um, it has nothing to do with this, um, but uh, because this, this is the second day of demos for the 14th learning cohort which is huge if you think about just the, the size and the impact, right? This is the, the second day of demos. I love Demo Day, right? Demo Day is an opportunity, and we get two of them each semester, to find out what people have been working on and to see it and see what they've been learning. And it's, it's really exciting. Um, it also concludes the semester. And this is big. As Jamie and I were talking backstage, right? Cohort always runs so fast it's uh it's 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 fast <laughs> so um and and we're here already which is exciting and and awesome um and this this week is special um xapi learning cohort is a community it's not just about learning and right so you know this is this is us as learning experience designers and developers geeking out about the technology but if you take a step back for a moment and think about the community that this is, this is huge. Over 4,000 people have joined cohort over the last seven years that we have been running this as a learning cohort. And prior to this, there were three cohorts as design cohorts, right? It's a movement. It's a, a community. There is so much passion around this work. Um, I got into the learning space about 2002 and I don't, maybe I just wasn't aware of it, but I didn't get the, the vibe that there was any excitement around SCORM. Maybe there was, and I, I should do my history. Um, but there is so much about excitement about XAPI and passion, right? And think about it, right? We're all learning new skills, which is exciting and cool. There is a new field called learning engineering that has come up through and alongside this, uh, this data explosion that we have. And this is how learning professionals are getting into using data and analytics in a, this beautiful shared interoperable data space and people joked i got called by ben betts once the data hippie right but but it's if you think about it right this is pretty powerful the magic of xapi right is not the technology the magic of xapi is the agreement of an entire industry to come together and to uh, agree to how we are going to talk about our work and what learners do in our products. And that's pretty powerful. And the excitement that I get when I meet people who are coming to XAPI for the first time, or they're meeting people you know, who've done cohort out in the world is, is, is amazing. At the same time, right, the specification itself is growing. And, and we spend here in cohort a lot of time talking about um, statements and data profiles, but there's a lot of work going on as far as catalog profiles and learner profiles and how do we keep track of competencies and certifications and that's big stuff and exciting stuff for our industry um, this is a fantastic time to be in our industry and as as the specification matures as the community matures as we as professionals mature together alongside of each other um cohort needs to mature and 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 grow um we've spent a lot of time uh talking about the fact that cohort is and should be right as free and open as the spec itself it should be uh something that we can all come to with low barriers of entry and have a common language um both as people as well as as technology um and it should be it should be bigger than any one supplier. And in 2015, when ADL said, no, we're, 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 we're stopping running our design cohorts. And I said, well, somebody 
somebody has to take this on. And it was one of those weak moments. I remember sitting in Alexandria, Virginia, and I was like, well, I'm going to do this. <laughs> um, and 14 cohorts later, we're going to move the move cohort on to its next home. I need to dig up a slide I used to have at about 2015, 2016, right? That showed the evolution of the specification. Um, and it, it, it would move toward a largely vendor supported community and movement to an industry supported movement. So um, I don't know if you checked your Learning Solutions magazine this morning when you woke up, um, but it was released there and then you're hearing it live. If you're on the live for the first time, the Learning Guild is going to pick up the cohort in the fall and steward it and shepherd it into its next evolution, taking on all the work that we've all been doing um, for, for all these years and to make sure that it, it continues, to make sure that it is robust, give it a big honk at marketing budget and, and, and energy and, and, and all that a, um, a, a, an industry organization can offer more than a single vendor can offer a single supplier in this space. So this is like watching your kid like launch. <laughs> it is exciting. Um, it is scary. It's a little bittersweet. Um, but I wanted you all to know as we were uh, moving this forward and, and to hear it from me and to hear it from in behind the scenes, with Jamie and Matt and the gnome. And, and uh, this, has been, this has been really exciting. And what's been really amazing throughout this process is the care and attention that the guild has put into making sure that cohort is cohort and, and continues with this same incredible vibe. And we're not going anywhere. Um, Matt and Jamie and I are, are behind the scenes working and supporting the guild with the transition. We will be right in there with you side by side in the fall and, um, and hoping to extend, extend the audience, extend the reach, extend the event and and got some big ideas planned for this. So um, I hope to see you all again in fall. We will get that sign up up soon. And um, with that, uh, let's let's break down the numbers and jump into cohort today. Uh, cohort is a uh, like we said, it's it's free and open source. It is uh, a movement and and something pretty pretty exciting. Um, our, we're recording this session today, so maybe you're catching this on the recording. Welcome and thank you for coming. Uh, we have 836 people registered for this cohort. It is the second largest cohort at this point. Um, the first fall of the pandemic, everybody was stuck at home with nothing else to do. We had a, a few more, but not a lot more um, than this cohort. Uh, week 12, today we have four demos, um, which is pretty awesome. We're going to go in this order. We have Nick Chan, uh, who sent us a video from Australia rather than staying up all night. Go figure. Um, and uh, so we have a, a video from Team LTEM. Uh, we have uh, Mark Cafuso and Team XAPI Developer Tools. Uh, Mary Elizabeth Mitchell, Laura Bible, and Kay Bell will be presenting the work that Team More Than Scorm has done. Uh, and Martin Kube is going to uh, play anchor for us and share with us the work that he's been doing as an offshoot as uh, of the Team CMI5 Create AU. So XAPI uh, uh, demos this week are pretty exciting. XAPI party in May will be really exciting. If you have not gotten in your proposals to present, to present your cohort project, hint, hint, nudge, nudge. I know the person who sets the program for the party and you're in, just send me your proposal. Um, and we've got a link. We'll make sure the link is in the cohort, um, in the weekly mailing and in um, the uh, chat right now. Thank you, Jamie. It's like having XML to just me talking and links show up. It's pretty magic. Um, and so XAPI party is pretty amazing at the Learning Guild's Learning Solutions Conference in two weeks. Two weeks? Yes, two weeks uh, from today is Demo Fest. And so I uh, hope to see you there for Demo Fest. There'll be some maybe more uh, projects also. Um, cohort, we're wrapping up our 12 weeks of learning by doing, project-based learning experience and community. By the way, if you haven't checked out the jobs board, 
should absolutely go check out the jobs board. Um, and I just found out, I will post them. There are two new job openings at Edward Jones um, that uh, I, I'll, I'll post them in. I didn't, haven't even looked at them. Haven't looked at my email yet, um, but uh, they, they, they look cool. So today we've got those project team demos. We're seeing it in action, um, and we have lots of opportunities to um, to to really see what's been worked on, and that's what's really exciting. So um, if you're planning on coming to the XAPI party, that means you've got a couple more weeks to work on your project and a little bit more time to demo. But today, today we have those four demos. So I am going to stop my screen sharing because. Jamie is going to tee up uh, the video from Nick, Team LTEM. So LTEM stands for the Learning Transfer Evaluation Model, which is Will Telheimer's um, uh, expansion schema for how we analyze learning experiences. And so I'm actually really excited to see what that team's been up to. Jamie, do we have that video ready to rock? Hi, my name is Nick and I'm an ID from Australia. My job is to create systems training for electronic medical records, or EMR, that is used in hospitals. My co-worker for this project was Mary, an ID from Tennessee. She's founded a company which creates instructor-led and online courses that make a positive business impact. Our aim with this project wasn't to learn how to code XAPI statements from scratch. We wanted to make this project simple so that any ID with reasonable experience in storyline could concentrate on adding value through their ID skills. Our other interest is using Will Thalheimer's Learning Transfer Evaluation Model, or LTEM, with XAPI to help evaluate learning. Our final project was creating a branching scenario within storyline that enabled us to evaluate whether the learner knew what to do, which is tier four under LTEM, knowledge, made the right decisions in undertaking a task, which is tier five, decision-making, and could perform a task to the required level of competence. These middle tiers of the LTEM methodology are specifically designed to measure whether learning has occurred in realistic simulations of whatever it is that we want the learners to learn. After quite a few weeks of figuring out how XAPI can be used with simple storyline triggers, we settled upon an existing storyline branching scenario, and this is what I'm going to go through today. The storyline module I'm displaying in this video was a branching scenario. The key knowledge arising from this scenario is that the clinician had to look at different information screens to get a full picture of what medications a patient had taken and when. The real life problem the training was trying to solve is that clinicians were forgetting to look at certain screens and getting the wrong information about when medications have been taken, when they've been stopped and so on. At each step of the branching scenario, users were given the option of looking at the information screens in the same way as they would as if they were using the real life system. My take is that simply looking at the screens represented the successful transfer of knowledge. The learners would then make decisions. It's possible to look at the screens and still make the wrong decision about medications. Choosing the right option at each stage of the branching scenario represented the decision-making tier in LTEM. If the training had done its job at this point, then there will be a successful transfer of decision-making skills. Finally, each pathway in the branching scenario comes to a different end. If they didn't look at the screens and didn't make the right decisions, then there were severe consequences for both the patient and those around him. If the clinician makes the right decisions all along the way, then they are competent in their task of ordering the appropriate medications during the patient's hospital stay and upon discharge. Once again, if the training has done the job, then there was successful transfer of task competence. In the storyline file, I used a new storyline ability to create XAPI statements. For those people within my organization, an XAPI statement returns information on the actor, the verb, and the object. The actor is the person undertaking the e-learning. The verb is one of 10 verbs the storyline allows you to pick from, and the object is something on the screen in storyline. This will make more sense once we look at a specific example. On this page, I created layers to represent each screen the clinician had to look at. These layers are called the MAR, the MAR summary, 
and the medication list. For example, let's say the clinician looks at the MA. This will take us to the MA layer. When the timeline starts on this layer, we set a trigger to send an X API statement. The actor is the learner. The verb could be one of several verbs, but since the learning is about viewing the different screens and getting information from them, I've chosen the verb viewed. We want to know that the actor, i.e. the learner, viewed the image of the MAR. The object that they viewed is a screenshot of the MAR at a certain date and time, so I've named the image very carefully. For the knowledge here, I've exclusively used the verb viewed. So when it comes to looking through the X API statements, I know how the clinicians are doing in the knowledge tier. Now it comes to the different decisions the clinician has to make in the branching scenario. For each answer choice, I've triggered an X API statement that says the user answered the object. Once again, I've named each object very carefully to say that they were decision competent or decision incompetent. For the decision making tier, therefore, I've exclusively used the verb answered. Finally, the decisions lead to various outcomes in the e-learning. For example, one consequence of several wrong decisions along the way is that the patient has a stroke because they can't inject their medication. Another consequence is that his grandson must go to hospital after swallowing leftover painkillers. When the learner reached each of the failed endings, I used the verb failed. There's only one good ending where I use the verb satisfied. For the task competence tier, the object is the slide name. I start off the name with failed task competence, and then I gave detail about why they failed by stating the incorrect drugs they ordered as home medications. In this case, anoxaparin and oxycodone. For the success slide, I named it task competent, so that the statement is that the learner satisfied task competence fully competent. Once I'd finished the storyline file, I uploaded it to a learning management system which in this case was SCORM Cloud. I also used an almost free offer from LRS Grassblade to have some decent reporting. For those who haven't used Storyline and XAPI before, I had to publish firstly to my LMS and then an external learning record store. In SCORM Cloud, they have an LRS, so I had to get what was known as the LRS endpoint, key and secret from Grassblade LRS to put it into the publication settings. This all will vary according to the LMS slash LRS, so I won't go into too much detail. I unleashed the e-learning on my poor learners via a SCORM Cloud link. All my learners were people who had no prior training and no idea what to do, but there was the opportunity to go back and make different decisions, so I had a wide range of statements to look at. Using the filters in Grassblade LRS, we have a rich picture of how my learners actually performed in the simulation. We could make judgments on whether they managed to transfer knowledge from the statements that said they viewed the different screens. We know whether they can make the right decisions in the simulation. And of course, we know whether they can do the task successfully in a simulated environment. If this was a real world X API project, I'd then hopefully be able to use that data to see whether what we saw in terms of performance in the simulation was reflected in the real world. Anyway, that's our presentation. I hope it taught you a little about how XAPI can be used in Storyline. Uh, feel free to email me on the address on the screen if you have any further questions, and I hope this helps someone somewhere. Okay, that was super, super cool. Um, and a huge props, Dick, for, uh, and Mary, uh, for sending that video from uh, the other side of the world. Uh, and that was just really great. So I love seeing it pulled together and right, Megan, right? It's super helpful, like how to, where to put the stuff and how to, how to actually do it um, with tools that many of us already own and a dollar. Pretty cool. So next up, we have Mark Cafuzo with Team XAPI Developer Tools. Mark, you ready to rock? I am. All right, let's do it. Hi, everyone. Uh, my interest in SCORM and XAPI began when we started to have clients of our uh, Better Impact Volunteer Impact tool. Um, and just as a quick aside, um, the company where I work, I have a, a lot of fun working on a volunteer uh, management platform. We are basically the Airbnb of volunteerism. And volunteers need to be trained. Volunteers need to have qualifications. Volunteers need to 
know what they're doing within the certain space that they're volunteering in. So as a volunteer, uh, you can sign up for anything out there that you can volunteer for and the volunteer organizations can find your profile and um, talk to you about different opportunities. So what was happening was we were having clients asking, you know, do you have SCORM? Are you SCORM? And I thought, what's SCORM? Is it a scorekeeping thing? Is there a storm? We didn't know anything about it. So I, I'm very, very new to this whole entire thing. Uh, and I just started looking for ways that I can learn all about XAPI. And uh, so we did, some, we, we did some research and essentially our clients want to integrate their learning platform um, into the, their volunteer management um, account so that they can actually show uh, which of their volunteers have qualified for a certain thing, whatever it is. So we already have a quali qualifications module and so what we're working on right now uh, internally, um, and I started the, the process of making it about FOSS, you know, free open source software. I went through the, the, the same uh, process I normally would for an open source project, um, in, including uh, having the cohort uh, GitHub a fork of what's actually already out there so anyone can contribute. Um, this goes well beyond this particular season, uh, which is uh, Spring XAPI cohort. 2022. Uh, this is going to go on for a, a long time. There, there will be uh, developer tools team two next year. I'm, I'm coming back. <laughs> and uh, we we didn't really get everything we wanted. I mean, I was just really testing the waters and a lot of us who were lurking within that, that team channel were also doing that. Um, we had a number of people working in pockets. So what I was working on was this very small component. This is a, th that video is a very hard one to act to follow because mine is very much a drill down into something much more uh, in the minutia of, of X API. So we're working on something that will basically just link up with uh, any of our clients e-learning system. That could be any um, X API compliant uh, platform. And then we need to get the information on a course that they've con completed or oh, and, and bring that into a qualification. And then they get a badge on their account. And then the volunteer organization can see who's qualified for that volunteer work and who hasn't. Uh, so what I was working on, I'm going to screen share now uh, in terms of what I've been working on for quite some time here, is a, um, a Visual Studio Code uh, integration. And what that means is that uh, Visual Studio Code is an IDE or basically a fancy text editor for a, a application developer to work in and write their code. So we needed a way right off the bat to validate XAPI. And you might ask, well, we have these XAPI platforms. Are you saying that they're going to produ or produce or output non-conformant uh, XAPI statements? Well, that's not the thing that we're worried about. We're worried about us as developers doing it. As we're writing code, we'll often introduce bugs or make mistakes. And we'll have to check whether or not what we've coded up will actually produce a proper XAPI statement. So what I did is I got working with the ADL um, information, also some, some things from Rustiki, where they had shared and made open source. Once again, there's that theme. Uh, they made the, um, the JSON validation. Uh, so this was, I was using, I believe, um, uh, one of those two. So I basically went there grab that information and then built that directly into my tool here. So what this will do, and this is actually a perfectly formed XAPI statement. What we're going to do is just going to run the validator. This is still in very much of a developer mode, and it will tell me that the XAPI JSON is valid. Now, what happens if, for example, I change actor to act? That's not actually correct. So I'm going to validate it again by selecting the two curly braces of the XAPI statement. And now it will tell me, statement, must have required property actor, item missing property actor, fix the error, select text and revalidate. So I fix it. I introduce another error, change that to objects and revalidate. So I'm not ready yet. Now that's a little bit of a timing thing. You have to be very quick to revalidate or, or you missed the vote. So that's something I'm going to be working on. So now it's fine with actor, but it's it, it's not happy with objects being plural. So all I have to do is fix that, and I'm back to conformant uh, conformant X API statement once again. So everything's fine. I can close that off. These will actually uh, close after all. I was going to do some work there. Plus, when you look at this information here, so I'm going to change another one. 
I'm going to leave verb out. Here, so you could delete verb altogether. Oh, I get my mouse working here. There we go. So I was going to work on this message, make it a little prettier, but now it's complaining that verb is missing. So I'm going to have to revalidate that. These are two competing um, notifications that are happening that I'm going to fix, I promise. Uh, and going to put verb back in, revalidate. And this will validate uh, statements right inside of your JavaScript code, which is something that we have a need for. Um, also working on, so you can see that that's valid. And that's basically it. So what that's help, how is this helpful? Well, first of all, we often write XAPI statements right into our code, first of all. Um, and that's, that's a need. I also actually started out, and I have actually removed that, that feature um, and disabled it for the time being, that you can actually take an entire file, entire JSON file, and validate that, or a batch of files, or any, any amount of files that you want. So this really helps with a lot of the nuts and bolts of working with XAPIs from a developer's perspective. This isn't a tool that you could use as a third-party application. Um, but this will be integrated right in. This is going to be going directly to the Visual Studio Code Marketplace so that any uh, developer who's working with XCPI can actually uh, add that as an extension to their, to their IDE. Also, I've, I've created uh, NPM packages in the past for Node.js. Uh, it's going to go in there as well as a Node.js um, um, validator that works on that platform. And that's basically it. These are the, the things that uh, developers like me care about. And uh, this was... Uh, pretty much com commissioned by my my team because we need these tools. And I, I've already saved by going to the cohort, learning about CMI5 and learning how to how to um, bring SCORM and XCPI together. I probably already saved our company uh, tens of thousands of dollars already with the knowledge that we have. So that's my presentation. Um, again, we're going to be back. And uh, let's keep work on the, working on this team. I'm really excited about the things that we can bring to the table. Thank you. Mark, that is outstanding. Um, aside from the fact that you have little flames when you delete stuff from your code editor, which is pretty awesome. <laughs> um, but um, the, which I realized was not what you were demoing, but it, it, it was fun in the chat. Um, that's outstanding. And I know that um, having that kind of check before you go, you know, as you're building is fantastic. So um, I love knowing that learning this stuff and this experience has helped not only you all save ten thousand dollars or more but also just the work that you're doing around connecting volunteers and organizations that's awesome too mm -hmm. right so it's it's multiple layers of of goodness um i think you probably also have attracted some fall cohort team members oh, because this is some pretty cool stuff so um i uh uh, I, I love it. Thank you. Thank you. I do hope you will present this at the XAPI party. We'll give you a little bit more time to uh, to do that also and uh, and a bigger audience. So that tends to uh, draw a good crowd. So thank you That's so right. much. Thank Congratulations. You Thanks for all your uh, hearts and likes. It's awesome. <laughs> awesome. That's what we do around here. Hearts and likes. We love it. Awesome. Thanks, Mark. Oh, I love demo day. I love demo day. Okay, next up, this is team more than SCORM. Team more than SCORM, Mary Elizabeth Mitchell, Laura Bible, and Kay Bell, who are representing a larger team. Um, and, and I'd love to know, what have you been working on this semester? What have you got to show us? Go ahead, turn on your mics and your cameras. I know not everybody got a chance to tech check, so we'll just make sure you're all good. Kay, I see your mic is on. Hey, Elizabeth is on. Awesome. All right, I'm getting out of your way. <laughs> Hi, you. everyone. We are Team More Than SCORM, and um, I'm Laura. Um, Mary Elizabeth, go to the next slide. And this is our team. Uh, Mary Elizabeth Mitchell was our um, our leader in this project and she did an amazing job. I was really more of a lurker. Um, this is my first cohort, so I didn't really um, know much about X API. So this is kind of new for me, but this is our team. And I really enjoy getting to um, meet everybody and learn from their expertise and their, their knowledge. It was really incredible. And thank you so much for, um, 
giving us this cohort. It's been a really great place to grow and learn. So, all right, next. So our team goals with this project, um, we were going to explore ways to improve learner data collection. If you have an LMS that only supports SCORM and um, most of us on the team, we work for the same um, organization. And so this is something that we were really interested in. So we were going to um, work on creating X API to communicate learner engagement with a non LMS item, such as an article linked in a course creating X API within Storyline to communicate data about learner engagement with a simulation and creating X API to gather item level data from assessment questions in Storyline. Okay. All right, thanks, Laura. Um, so as we started talking about and exploring these ideas, we discovered that among our team, we had um, kind of three different categories of interest. Um, one group wanted to take a look at how we could get behavior information out of simulations. Um, I was really excited to see the work that Nick and Mary had done because that was really similar to what we want, what we want to do, um, what we were looking at achieving. Um, and you'll see more about that in just a minute. Um, and then also we wanted to see um, if we could get item level information from quiz questions in Storyline. Um, in, our, in our organization, there's a really high emph emphasis on competency-based learning where we want learners to be able to engage with um, the, the learning resources that they need in order to fill in the gaps in their competency and you know, get to competent as quickly as possible. Um, and so that data uh, will really help us be able to do that and point them at the right, um, the right pieces of, uh, of learning. Um, and then also there was another uh, part of our group that wanted to look at um, testing a SCORM file prior to deployment um, to see that we had our XAPI coming out of the, the SCORM file um, so that we could take a look at that in our LRS. So um, uh, let's see, they did a really great demo of the storyline, the new feature in storyline where you can publish to your LRS, where you can just put your information right in. Um, and so you just choose, it's in that same tab for publishing to an LMS. Um, you just add the LRS information as well. Um, and that's this left side of the slide here. Um, you just grab your information from your LRS, put in your endpoint, your key, and your secret, and it is pointed there. Um, it also gives you the option to have your actor supplied by the launch URL. Um, we were not able to make that work with our LMS, um, so we used the JavaScript option um, where you can either have it uh, identify a static mailbox, a static account, or generate a random account so that you can tell the difference between um, users who are testing um, or who are, you know, uh, different users who, who might be engaging with your content. Okay, and this is just a really brief look um, at the XAPI statement builder. This is the same thing that, um, that Nick showed in his video where um, Storyline just uh, in the winter published a version where they have this wizard that really walks you through creating a limited number of custom X API statements. Um, so it just, it kind of gives you all the, the, all the Lego bricks that you can just put together. So it's really, really handy. Um, all right, Kay. Kay's gonna talk a little bit about simulations and what we found there. Great, thank you, Mary Elizabeth. So um, the team created a simulation in Storyline based on um, general topic and brief steps to send an email uh, in Microsoft Outlook. Uh, the simulation included three modes, the, the view, the try, and the test modes, uh, which the view mode initially provides the learner with the opportunity to view the steps. So the, the learner then goes into the opportunity to give it a try by following the steps with hint captions along the way for the try mode. Uh, and then the test mode assesses the learner's knowledge. And what we wanted to do is explore the data to see if we could capture how the learners would navigate uh, in the simulation, especially thinking about the
the the try and the test modes, such as like the previous and the back buttons, and for you know understanding those steps that may not be understood, or to see if learners would skip any steps because they were already familiar with those steps, or even you know if they would get stuck in any specific areas as they're going through the um, the the try and the test modes. Okay, next, Mary Elizabeth. Okay, so then the team used the storyline simulation and created a test instance of Watershed LRS and also used um, the SCORM cloud to test functionality. And we published the simulation with the LRS connection turned on and no custom X API. So this is just the standard course with no specific JavaScript uh, triggers. And we also did um, publish the course with XAPI statements created with the new statement builder within Storyline. And um, we found that the course with no custom XAPI published as HTML for web and launched um, from the browser, it actually sent statements for standard learning learner interactions to Watershed based on the LRS settings. Um, and as a side note, we do want to um, mention that we discovered that it's important to label very carefully in Storyline uh, based on what was identified in the watershed data. Also, the course um, with no custom XAPI published is SCORM. It worked well in SCORM Cloud. Um, and it sent XAPI statements uh, to Watershed successfully. However, when we put it into our bridge learning management system, uh, we did not, it did not send any data to Watershed. Um, we also gave it a try with um, the custom XAPI, as Mary Elizabeth mentioned, um, where we created the XAPI statement uh, using the builder within Storyline. But we found that when we attempted that, the publishing uh, of the file, for some reason, it caused Storyline to crash. Uh, we used several versions, but um, we still ended up with the same results on that. Okay, back to you, Mary Elizabeth. All right, thanks, Kay. Um, so we uh, we also tried just a regular quiz in Storyline to see what data we could get out of that, what it looked like without adding any of, of uh, the custom X API, just publishing it with the LRS uh, connection turned on. Um, and again, we tried that, you know, we added the LRS information, but then published it for the web as HTML. We got data in Watershed and the, the out of the box data is awesome, actually. Um, even just connecting it to the LRS. So publishing a course uh, that was was created in the same way that we would create a SCORM package um, actually kicks out XAPI statements to Watershed for us. And that was pretty exciting. Um, even to the level of um, item, item level responses where you're getting you know, what they actually answered. And again, labeling is really important here. Um, so making sure that you go through and label your options so you're getting what the question actually was rather than radio button five. Um, and uh, you don't have to go back and uh, dig through that to figure out what the heck that was. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, and we found the same thing as we were trying to publish from Storyline with the custom XAPI statements using the XAPI statement builder. Uh, our, our, our instance of storyline would crash. Um, we, we tried all kinds of things and uh, to see if we could get that to work. Um, let's see, and this is the data out of SCORM Cloud for the quiz. Um, uh, Deb was working with that and published it as an invite link. And so that's how she's getting the actor as her name um, because that's actually pulling that from SCORM Cloud. And yeah, this is a sad empty chair that represents what we got when we published it to Bridge. <laughs> um, and and uh, so our, yeah, that just talks about the bugs. Like we would really like to, uh, in the future, steps might be working with Articulate to see what's happening um, with Storyline. Why is it crashing on us? Um, if that's a bug or if that's something we can change that will make it work. 
Um, and then also we'd like to do more testing with the custom XAPI statements in simulations and scenarios um, to see what other data might be useful uh, to, to get out of that and how we can set that up. Um, also for our organization in particular, um, we would want to look at uh, different labeling conventions to make sure that we're getting useful data. So, you know, how we're labeling our objects, how we're labeling our um, both our STEM and our uh, our answers and distractors um, so that we're able to to get that data and have it mean something. Um, and then also uh, continuing to work with Bridge LMS, um, who is actually owned by LTG, um, who also owns Watershed. Uh, so hopefully we can make that work uh, through talking to them um, and, and see why we're not getting anything out of Bridge and, and how we can make that work. Um, another option is to publish from Storyline as XAPI, so, and then take that XAPI package and add a SCORM wrapper um, using SCORM Cloud. So that, that's another thing that we want to try. And that is what we found, this, this cohort. So more to do, more to do. <laughs> wow. Wow. I love like all the different layers and levels that you are looking at. What can you do in what different permutations? What are you testing? What are you finding? Um, I think this is fantastic. In the back of my mind, I see see a future article for Learning Solutions Magazine. So um, a few years ago, there was a team that did, um, there, there was a team that did work and they tested different authoring packages to see what they got out of with XAPI data, just out of the box. This is a whole new evolution of that, including things like how, how do I meaningfully label things in order to get data out the way I want them? So um, this is that, that foundational work that you need to do in order to have meaningful analytics afterwards. So fantastic team. Is this something that you're gonna continue in fall maybe? Hint, hint, wonderful. Yeah, else? we, um, I, I would imagine that we will. Um, and I know we may, you know, continue it more or less immediately um, since our organization is looking at, you know, we're at that that sort of baby step stage where we're convincing our organ organization to spend money on an LRS is kind of the step that we're at. So showing them, look, this is the shiny thing you could have. Um, that's, that's what we're doing right now. Mary Elizabeth, I've got goosebumps because that is what the <laughs> award is all about, is being able to come here, make something, Great, crowdsource the insights and the the, the ideas of the, the 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 crowd, and be able to come back and say, "Look what I made! Now I want budget." <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, that is fantastic. Really, really well done. I'm uh, I'm very excited about that. And you know, the cohort I'm, cohort Slack is open all the time. I'm not here every Thursday all summer long, but uh, cohort Slack is is here and. Uh, so by all means, continue to, to use that as a resource for you. Um, and the guild, by the way, has committed to keep their keeping the slack. They're keeping like, this is all. That's really exciting. That's really they're exciting. Doing, they're doing a really, <laughs> really amazing job. So super cool. Um, that's pretty cool. So fantastic. Okay. Very well done. Hope to see you at XAPI party. Thanks. Hint, hint. Thank you. So, all right. Hey, thanks everybody. We have one last demo today. Uh, Martin Koob, who has done a, a, an offshoot of last semester's Team CMI 5, Create AU and AU um, in LMS Geek Speak is an assignable unit of SCORM package. Um, so, um, or package of packages. So Martin, I would love to see what you've been working on this semester. So when well, Martin turns on camera and there we go, camera and audio, we are rocking. It's all yours. Share right screen. Today. Okay. So, oh wait. Go ahead. Oh wait, I got select a screen. Screen two. Wow. We got it. We're we getting it. Okay, I gotta stop sharing it because I shared the wrong way. It's screen okay. one I need to share. Sorry, sorry. Stop sorry, I do that all the time. Yeah. Okay. 
that's the one. Okay. So I'm going to go. Yeah, okay. So if you're in, okay, so CMI5 is basically SCORM plus A, A or plus X API. So the reason CMI5 was created is sort of the next generation after SCORM. So there's some limitations of SCORM. Um, it can only operate within a browser. Um, that's one of the things that I was concerned about. I wanted to see, can I operate, can I connect an application that I run, an uh, e-learning app, which is a separate application and still send LMS, but still connect to the, or still send uh, statements to the LRS, but be launched within an LMS. With SCORM, you can't. Um, SCORM can't track things like XAPI can. Um, it can't track mobile applications natively. And the content has to be on the same server or in the same domain as the LMS. And the data collected and stored is within the LMS. That's just SCORM without XAPI. And XAPI has things that go beyond what SCORM can do, but the problem with it is it can't be launched. It, if, you, if you just have XAPI, you can't launch that within an LMS. SCORM is excellent for make, packaging everything up so that it can be just launched, like you can develop your SCORM. And as long as it's compliant, lots of different LMSs will play it. XAPI doesn't do that for you. Um, it doesn't have established learning activity rules for normalized reporting, that I don't understand. That's beyond my <laughs> area of expertise. That's more the, the uh, learning designers people. I'm more of the developer type. Um, and doesn't have com defined completion criteria. So CMI5 is, this, is actually what it is, is it's a profile of XAPI. And I don't know which is above the other. But so XAPI has a whole bunch of commands. And you could just say have like tons and hundreds of verbs. And but what has happened is, like for example, for video, if you want to play video and get certain statements from it, a working group got together, um, came up with the proper verbs, the proper context, how to write an XAPI statement, and so that certain actions like when the player started, when the player stopped, if they um, skipped ahead if they um, went back and it would that has all ways of tracking so you can know exactly how much of that content and exactly which content the, the viewer watched but the way to get that is you read the profile you use the verbs and then an lm an lrs that knows how to understand the video profile can give you amazing feedback and analytics like for example the grass blade lrs the person who um, runs that is the one who worked on the video profile so when you view things created that follow that you'll see hot um, heat maps that show okay this user watched these parts but they skipped here and they went on so that's sort of the power of the profile it gives a common language so everyone who wants to develop video does that so to create something like scorm that has the power of XAPI and the power of SCORM, another profile was created called the CMI5 profile. And it bridges that divide. It can be packaged, it can be shared, it can be launched in any CMI5 compliant LMS, which there aren't as many as there are SCORM compliant LMSs. And, but it's, it's growing and there's a, a, a definitely a project to get that more um, compliance. And I'll talk about that in a minute. And it also can do all the great stuff that XAPI can do because it's built on XAPI. So, and I'll put the link up here at, at, after someone can do that for me. If you want to learn about CMI5 from start to finish and A to Z and all of those, um, CMI5 best, best practices guide is, is, developed, is created by Aristiki software from conception to conformance. Uh, okay, so now on to Oh, am I not showing? You know what? I didn't show any of my little graphics there. So here's a summary. I had that on the wrong screen. <laughs> okay, so here's the uh, limitations of SCORM. 
if you want to do a screenshot, limitations of XAPI, and then the fact that CMI5 is an XAPI profile. And then there's the cover. So that was all my fancy um, graphics. Okay, so now the actual demo. So what I've been working on is how can you do a, de a, a desktop application that does what an LMS does? Because generally it's a web page. That's all your e-learning is, is a web page that's been developed by one of the, the applications like um, Storyline or whatever. And how am I doing for time? Oh, I'm still good. Okay, so, so as far as the conformance parts of things, Catapult is a project that was contracted, like ADL contracted Rastiki, as far as I understand it, to develop a way to promote and encourage the use of CMI5. So what they created is Catapult. So it will launch a, a mini LMS that has a CMI5 player in it. And all you bring is your LRS. And so you could create content with Storyline, which can output to CMI5 as well as SCORM. And it, it, to, to, if you want to think about it, it's like, I want to save it as a doc or I want to save it as a PDF, right? Like It's like you can save two things and a Mac will open it, a Windows will open it, a whatever will open it. So they're just two things that try to do a, the same end result, except the XAPI version of it does way more. So. So in this LMS, I can have courses. And so anyone will rec recognize the, um, the geology one. I, and I launch it. Oh, I've got a pop-up block or something. Anyways, so that's the big problem with using web. Um, sorry, <laughs> I'm not gonna, cause I, I didn't test this part of it before. What I wanna do is I do, wanna do a new course. And so normally what you do is you'd look for your SCORM folder and you browse and you'd upload it. But I'm gonna do it by using an XML file. So I've created an XML file. That's not a part of it, okay. So this is the same thing that's in your CMI5.XML file that's within your SCORM, or no. Right. It, you can have a CMI5 file within the LMS, right? So you have a package within the LMS that has, this is one of the files in it, and you can have your web page, and you can have your images, and you can have all of this. So that's what Storyline would create. Would create a, a folder that has all of this stuff, and then you load that folder. So you would do that through the file upload. Um, I wanna do it outside of a browser, I don't want to have anything to do with that. So I just created this. Um, so it's the same format. Um, and so there's sort of the course information. And I just say, this is Hello World. It's a demonstration of launching an AU from a simple CMX, CMI5 XML file. I have my ID, which is just uh, a URL and some other values. And then the important part is this URL. So it just says, can I bump that up? Bigger. And it just says LC web launch colon slash slash, and then a website that I own. And I'm just pointing it to just a, a basically an empty web page because I don't have any content yet for this. Okay, so I copy this. I paste it in here and import. That shows my course structure, which is, is Hello World, which is my course, and Hello World, which is my AU. So now I test it. And this is just a, a part of Catapult. They got sick of writing name, account, homepage, something, and just randomize and just randomly gives you something. So <laughs> apparently this is like the favorite feature of uh, the people at Rustiki because that's uh, like a, a repetitive task. Okay, so now I've got, you know, Beth Hahn and her account homepage and the account name and all of that stuff. 
The registration's been completed. So there's your registration information. There's my publisher ID. So all of this, the, that little mini LMS that's built into Catapult is providing this. So now it's time for me to launch. And now it says, do you want to allow this page to open LC Web Launcher? So if you've ever launched Zoom, if you've ever launched, um, I don't know, something like, I can't think of another one right in the moment, but Zoom, it'll prompt you, do you want to launch Zoom? And so what it is, is it's, I think it's Z-O-O-M-M-T-G colon da 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 And so what that is, is it's a, a scheme. So that HTTP is the scheme we're, we're most familiar with, but you could put anything as a scheme, you can make up your own. So that's what I did. So I say, yep, allow it. And I give it a second and it comes up. And right now it's just a bare bones um, thing. But what uh, the first thing that um, um, when you launch um, an AU within an LMS system is that a launch URL is generated. And the launch URL is something like this. So it just has this huge, long encoded data. You never see it when you're using the, your web browser, right? The web browser sort of handles that behind the scenes and then sets everything up for you. But within an application, I can, on Apple, what it does is it gets an Apple event. As soon as the Apple event is got, because it got launched by a browser, and then I say, okay, now I want the data that from the URL. And the data then comes down, and then I just parse it. So this is the um, the, um, the LRS's endpoint. This is the fetch URL. And this is the actor. So all that information from the actor is, is down as a JSON, that's the activity ID, and that's the registration. So this is the information I need to start communicating with the LRS. But the ne next thing I need is um, to get the, uh, the person who's logged into the LRS. Now it has to give me permission to log into the LRS, like my application. So to do that, it gives this fetch URL. So that gets sent back to the LMS and the LMS sends back to, um, oh, what do you call them? My, my brain is just fried here. Um, kind of like little debit, little cards that get into your hotel room. I've, I've been traveling and I, get, <laughs> I, I got home from traveling from like for four days and we have one of those little things, the thumb things too, and it has a little light that goes and it goes from red to green to open our door. And I tried to put my credit card in there to try and get into my house. So brain's not going. Credentials. So that's what they're called. Credentials. Okay. So it gives you the credentials that then you plug into um, another URL. And then that's what you use to send it to your LRS. So that's as far as I've gotten. Um, Megan said, no matter what state it's in, you can present. So that's where I've gotten, and it's 2.59, and that's really good. And so this is the teaser. So watch at the XAPI party for the rest of the story, because then I'll have it hooked up to the LRS, and I've got some activities that will work, and it will all be really interesting. That is fantastic. And, you know, I have to say, Martin, um, thank you for taking me up on the challenge to present in whatever state it's in because yeah. that's part of what we're doing here. And, uh, you know, we all have live, we're all volunteers here yeah. <laughs> and, and, and doing this on the side and, 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 and learning as we go. So fantastic, really well done and a great demo to, uh, to wrap up this, this semester and this cohort. So okay. thank you everybody. These are so many great demos uh, this week from, from Nick and Mark and Martin and Kay and Laura and Mary Elizabeth uh, and everybody who demoed last week. Um, everybody, this is, this is fantastic. 
take a moment in the next five minutes and celebrate the work that you have done this semester. Celebrate the, the learning that you've done. Um, even if you haven't been on a project team, you co just come to meetings or come every once in a while. Um, this is a big, a, a big part of our, our professional development and uh, it's pretty exciting stuff. So thank you everybody. Uh, we will see you at the XAPI party. We will see you out in the world. We'll see you at cohort in the fall. So thanks everybody. Go out there and make something cool and then tell us about it.